Thanks. All right, uh, Janice has been holding. Janice, you're on the air. How can we help you? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm kind of uh, need some clarification on what is bad faith with insurance companies. <laughs> like, what are the signs when you, when you think your insurance company is, is you yeah. know, trying to pull the wool over your eyes, and, and but you're not sure, and is there some signs to look for or well, some... Well, look, it's this, I think, in a nutshell, and, and before I say this, uh, Bob Kerrigan, our partner, is a true expert in the area of bad faith and have, has gotten very substantial verdicts and recoveries against insurance companies over and above their limits. So my answer is not going to be nearly as good as his would be. But, but s simply put, Janice, let's use a, an automobile accident uh, example. If, if you buy insurance from your automobile insurance company, you, you pay your premiums and in return the deal is that your insurance company is going to protect you that's what insurance is so you you're buying protection from your insurance company and in return they've got to offer and come come through with that protection so if you buy as an example a hundred thousand dollar automobile insurance policy that protects you up to a hundred thousand dollars your insurance company is going to pay somebody that you hurt by running a stop sign or causing an accident then, then that's the bargain you've made with your insurance company. If you hurt somebody like that, for example, and that person says, listen to your insurance company, I will accept Janice's $100,000 liability limits if you'll pay it and we'll release Janice. And your insurance company says, no, we're not going to pay that $100,000. We don't think the claim is worth that. And as, and as a consequence of that, that person gets a verdict against you and a judgment against you for five hundred thousand dollars your insurance company has exposed you to a huge problem and judgment when they could have settled the case for the insurance limits that you bought okay mm -hmm. so an insurance company has a duty to settle your case when okay. under all the facts they should have settled the case and in that example I gave, they didn't, and you were exposed to a large judgment that they could have resolved by paying the limits that you bought. So that, I think, is the most common example of, of bad faith. Okay. When your insurance company doesn't resolve a case when they should have, and that's, that's what you're paying your premiums for. Correct. Okay? Any, anything else? Any follow-up No, that, that, that helps to clarify it. And listen, the, the, you know, in, in Florida, uh, you know, we've had a lot of legislation and case law that, that, that helps lawyers sift through bad faith law. But mm -hmm. one of the things it does is our law in Florida makes insurance companies do the right thing when they, given all of these facts, should clearly resolve these cases for people. And... Uh, you know, pe people that are seriously hurt benefit from that through Florida's bad faith law because it provides for a recovery when otherwise there might not be one. Yeah, and Janice, here's the other thing I would say. I mean, a lot of people, Mike, you and I know it again from being on the air for so long. There's a lot of people that have some fact-specific questions they'd like to ask, and they feel a little uncomfortable doing it on the air. Feel free to call any one of the numbers you see on the bottom of the screen tomorrow. Those are our office numbers. We'll be glad to talk to you. Uh, you know, off the air, so you don't have to tell people what your issue is. But, right. you know, Janice, I don't know if it involves your homeowner's insurance or a car accident case or a, a, another claim where you're trying to get it settled because you're the one that's injured. So, you know, feel, feel free to either tell us tonight or call us back tomorrow and give us some more details. Okay. Okay? I sure will. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the call. All righty. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right, uh, we're going to try to jump to Taitha. Thank you for holding. How can we help you tonight? Yes, sir. How are you doing? Hey, you Taitha. know what? We're doing great, but I can tell you from hearing the feedback to your in the television set, our screener yes, should sir. have told you when they called, but you have to turn down the volume all the uh -oh. way down on your TV. Okay, I'm sorry. That's all right. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, that's better? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question. I never uh, went through this before. My daddy had got in a, um, a truck accident uh, this year, January, where a truck, truck had broke his neck. Oh, my. 
and uh, he had, he had some insurance on this car that they uh, that they study investigate. Uh, I haven't seen no insurance and nothing like that, you know. What happened to your uh, dad, Taifa? He had got killed by a Putwood truck in Monroe. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, Taifa was your was your dad married at the time? Uh, no, sir. He wasn't married at all. And did he have? You, 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 he was your dad. Did he have other children besides you? Uh, yes, sir. I got like about six. I got like six. You know, he had six kids. Well, my oldest brother got yeah. killed in California, and I'm the oldest out of all of them. Well, have you all have you all talked to a lawyer yet who who specializes in cases involving serious injury or death cases? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Well, listen, I would. And Randy, I know you're going to agree with me about this. Taitha, I just wouldn't think that this is a situation where you or members of your family would want to handle something like this on your own just because it involves such a serious consequence to your family. But, yes, that, you know, a lot of times people call our show or they call one of our numbers of our offices here, and we, we, sure. we very commonly tell people, we try and help them, but we say, we don't, we don't think you need a lawyer yet. A lot of things can be worked out, Randy better without lawyers quite honestly yes. but but when your father was killed if the accident was not his fault I mean you have potentially a very substantial case and and our firm or other firms who limit their work to just helping people in these cases we don't do you know we don't do divorce cases and we don't do criminal defense work we don't do estate planning but but this is the type of case we do so if we can help you answer questions, you can call any of these numbers tomorrow. Or, but, but, you know, a wrongful death case involves uh, a lot of our work. Very early on, we try to nail down witnesses to the accident. We try and get to the vehicles. We have wonderful investigators who, who can recreate accidents in a really dramatic way to prove that our clients were not at fault and somebody else was at fault and then we do a lot of work proving what your family has lost so so we've done it for a long time and we'd be happy to talk to you about it or, or but if you if you call a lawyer make sure those lawyers are experienced yes, sir. have tried cases we think in Florida lawyers ought to be board certified um, yes, your accident happened in Alabama and we have wonderful connections to terrific Alabama lawyers too so okay. so I hope that's helpful yes sir thank you yeah listen you need to call somebody uh, and and I wouldn't wait any longer I mean Alabama has a very short statute of limitations Good point. and I would call tomorrow somebody will be glad to talk to you it doesn't have to be us but you ought to call a board certified civil trial lawyer tomorrow to try to get yes, some sir. answers okay okay all right, Thank you very Thank you. much. We yeah, appreciate have a good night. it. Okay, right, you too now. Listen, we're going to take a short break. Uh, I'm Mike McLeod. I'm here with my partner, Randy Thompson, and we're here for all of our lawyers with Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson. Our firm specializes in wrongful death cases and serious injury cases. These are our offices and our office numbers. If you can't get through, Tonight, we'll welcome you to call us uh, anytime during the daytime. We'll be back after a short break. Welcome back to The Law Show, brought to you by the law firm Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson. I'm Mike McLeod with Randy Thompson. We've got uh, over 30 minutes left in the show to answer your legal questions live here from uh, our studio on WFGX. We've got open lines. We're going to take a call in just a minute about a hit and run. Uh, Randy, I want to ask you this first, though, about investigating an accident early. And you mentioned that you represent a child who was seriously injured at a store. Uh, but how important is it in a serious case to get to witnesses early and get to physical evidence early as opposed to a year later? Yeah, it, the physical evidence is critical. Uh, skid marks on a road, the way the, the, the car is moving, yawing as the experts talk about it, whether it's sliding, whether it's going straight forward, whether it's tracking straight, 
whether one tire is flat or whether one, one of the back tires is grabbing or not grabbing is critical. And those skid marks evaporate over time. With witnesses, you and I both know this. If it didn't happen to them, their life moves on. That's right. And they tend to forget about it. Now, I mean, if it's a, you know, violent, critical issue. Now, sometimes, truthfully, you know, the liability aspect of a case isn't what the issue is. It's whether the person was hurt or not hurt. You know, so sometimes uh, skid marks leading into the back of a vehicle are not important to go out and get because everybody acknowledges, the police acknowledge, and the insurance company acknowledges, okay, look, it's our fault. The question is just damages. But in these contested liability cases, uh, and I've got a great example to tell you. It's a very odd case, but I'll, but I'll, uh, I'll tell you when we have some time. Uh, but, but, but the witnesses tend to move on their own way, and they tend to forget about the important details of the accident because it didn't happen to them, and they're okay. Yeah. Okay. We got a... All right. Let's try. Uh, Mr. Williams, thank you very much for holding. How can we help you tonight? Yeah, I was in a hit and run. Somebody hit me and ran, hit and ran, and um, they served me a subpoena to show up for, for a deposition, and I show up for deposition. They keep uh, canceling the case. Well, uh, they caught the guy. It's a it's a subpoena in a criminal case, right? It's a federal case. Yeah, but it's a criminal federal case. So you got is it is it in your hit and run case? Yes, it's, in the hit. it's about the hit and run. Well, I mean, it sounds to me like they caught the guy and they're going to prosecute him, and you're a witness. No, I'm the, I'm the uh, victim. Well, yeah, but you're the victim, but you're also a witness in the case. I mean, they need you to prove the case against the guy who hit you and ran. I mean, they you have already you haven't... Uh, gave him a year of probation. Well, have you sued anybody? No. Well, there are only two cases that can come that, to my knowledge, from your hit and run. One is the guy who hit you and ran can be arrested and prosecuted, and you're the victim, yes, but you're also a witness. Or two, you could sue him or have a claim against him for the damage to your vehicle or your injuries. But those, So if you haven't made a claim against him... Oh, I did claim victims comp, but the people didn't have any license or insurance. Well, what, what's on the top of your subpoena? Does it say the United States government against so-and-so, or what's it say? No, it says uh, the man name against me. Against you? me. Oh, well, it sounds like you're the defendant in the case. Yes, I am the defendant. I got the paperwork right here. Yeah, it says his name against me. Oh, well, uh, does, and is he making a claim for damages against you? No, he's not making a claim against anything because it was his fault. He hit me on the right hand side <laughs> while I was making a right hand turn. Well, that hey, uh, listen, that that may be true, but if 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 the case is him versus you and you're listed as a defendant, then then he's making a claim against you. Now, you know he may have a different view of how the accident happened. It's hard to imagine a guy that hits you and then ran off is going to recover against you, but. But uh, if listen, if he's making a claim against you for money damages, you know well, the first thing you need to do is is notify your automobile insurance company if you have car insurance, and they'll provide you a lawyer. I I, I had car insurance on the car, yep. and when when the car got totaled, the company dropped my insurance. That's okay. It's what you had at the time of the accident. I mean, they could have dropped you five minutes after the accident, but it's what you had at the accident. You should absolutely notify your insurance company. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, hey. because after they towed the car away, I had to get the car towed away. Yeah. And the company, they dropped the insurance, said that they could insure a car that I no longer had possession of. Hey, listen, where, where are you calling from? Well, Walton Beach. Well, why don't you call our Fort Walton Beach number tomorrow, it's 244-1111. Yes, sir, I got you. All right, hold on. I, I ask, sure I don't... be glad to call because I sure need some help with you. Hey, listen, I'm not twisting your arm to get your cat. I'm just going to help you, I think. Okay. But if you call and ask for me, then I'll give you our fax number, and you can fax me that subpoena, and, and then I'll look at it, and I'll call you. You know, put your phone number on there. I'll call you back 